Uh, so today I'm going to be doing a video demonstrating how to install Arch Linux Anywhere using my Arch Anywhere ISO. And what this actually is, is it's a dual ISO containing local repositories allowing you to install packages offline. So essentially you can install Arch Linux without a network connection, which I will be demonstrating in this video. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to head over to SourceForge. The link will be down in the description. You're going to want to go ahead and pick up my Arch Anywhere ISO. Okay, the file size is 1.5 gigs, so it's not too bad considering this is a dual ISO and it has dual package repositories with a long list of packages, which you'll be seeing shortly. Okay, so once you get booted up into it, it's going to look just like this. It's going to be the Arch Linux Anywhere Edition. Okay, so we're just going to come over here and we're going to go ahead and install the 64-bit version. Okay, so it's going to boot up and I'm going to actually SSH into this to make a better video, so I'll be right back. Alright, so once it gets booted up, you're going to be at this screen here. It's going to say... Welcome to the Arch Linux Anywhere ISO, bringing you Arch Linux whenever and wherever you need it. Okay, so any questions or comments, you can go ahead and send them my email here. Um, if you'd like to utilize the local repo without using the installer script, you can just copy over home local pacman.conf to Etsy pacman.conf. Okay, and then it says to begin the automated install process, simply type Arch Anywhere. So we're going to go ahead, Arch Anywhere. Just type Arch Anywhere and press enter. So here we are in the install, or would you like to be in the install process? We'll go ahead and do that. What it does here is it checks your connection, which I actually am connected to the internet right now because I'm using SSH. So I am actually am connected with this virtual box. But it prompts you if you'd like to install from the local repository anyway. The thing to keep in mind here, the local repository packages are updated every two weeks. So if you're prompted for this, it means you do have an internet connection, which means you can install from the official repositories. It will be a slower download, but they will be updated packages. So if you're prompted for this, it will only be because you're online. If you're not connected to the network, it will automatically download from the local repos anyway. But for this video, we're actually going to download from the local repos, just so I can demonstrate. We'll hit yes here. Okay, please select your locale. I'm going to go with ENUS UTFA. All the others are listed in other here, so if you don't see yours here, it's in other. Okay, select your time zone. You're going to scroll through here and find your time zone. I'm going to go with U.S. I'm, I'm going to choose Eastern as my sub-zone. Okay, set your key map. I recommend leaving it the default, which is U.S. Um, you can change it if you know what you're changing it to, but other than that, um, I recommend just leaving it default. Okay, next it's going to ask you to select your drive. So, I've got two drives connected to this system. If you remember, this is a virtual system. Um, so you're just going to want to select your drive based on its size. So I'm going to go with this one, which is the 10 gig drive, SDA. Okay, next it's going to ask you your partitioning method. Um, I've got auto partitioning, which will re erase the entire drive and install Arch to it. I've got also auto partition encrypted, which does the same except creates encrypted root temp and swap partitions. Okay, I've got manual partition drive, which allows you to actually set up the partition scheme yourself. Okay, um, for instance, if you wanted to do dual booting, um, you could manually partition and install Arch right next to another system. Um, but for this video, we're just going to keep it simple, do auto partition drive. Okay, it says warning, will erase, so this will format your drive, so you've actually got to check over here and hit yes. Okay, it asks if you want to create a swap space. I recommend doing it in most cases. Only thing to keep in mind here is keep it aligned to capital G for gigabytes or capital M for megabytes. I'm going to go with the default, which is 512 megabytes. Would you like to use GPT partitioning? No reason to, so I'm just going to hit no for this. Okay, it created the file system. 
I was going to ask if you'd like to update your mirror list if you are connected to the internet. It's going to ask if you'd like to update your mirror list, which I would recommend going ahead and doing. So you'll just come in here, you'll find your country, scroll through the list of country codes, select your country, it's going to fetch the latest mirror. And then it's going to go ahead and actually rank that mirror list and place the fastest ones up at the top for you. This can take just a second depending on your connection speed. Okay, so once the mirror list is ranked, it's going to ask to begin installing Arch onto the drive. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes here. And I am downloading this all locally, so if you remember, I'm on a virtual box. If you'll notice here, my network connection is not active. I mean, you're seeing a little bit of activity here just from the fact that I'm connected over SSH. But all the packages were installed from the disk. which means you can install this completely on offline. You don't need an internet connection at all. As you can see, if I ls, as you see, I got a repo directory, and then under that, there's, there's a directory called install repo, and if I ls that, that's actually all the packages right there. It's a very long list of fa packages. If I wc dash See, if I word count, you can see there it's 425 packages in a local repo. Okay, so next it's going to ask if you want to install OS Prober. So you can do that to make it so you can dual boot. Well, we'll just do it just for the hell of it. Okay, and then it's going to install Grub. And then it's going to configure Grub. Okay, and then it's going to detect whether or not you have a 64-bit architecture. If you do, it's going to ask to add the multi-lib repos to your Pac-Man configuration. I recommend doing this if you're prompted. It's going to ask if you'd like to add the Arch Linux French repositories to your Pac-Man config. Okay, next it's going to ask you to set your host name. The default is Arch. I'm just going to go with Arch Vbox. Okay, then it's going to ask for your root password. Go ahead and set a nice strong password here. It's going to ask if you'd like to create a sudo user, so I recommend going ahead and creating a user now. Okay, it's going to ask for your user password. Go ahead and set your user password here. Enable sudo privilege for members of Wheel. What this does is it will make it so your user can use the sudo command to administer your system. So um, you're most likely going to want to do this, otherwise, you won't be able to use sudo. Okay, enable DHCP at boot. You're going to want that also to automatically configure your IP information. Okay, install wireless tools and WVA supplicant. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and do that if you have Wi-Fi so you can connect after you boot. Okay, would you like to install XORG server? This is actually enables you to have a graphical interface. So we're going to go ahead and do this so we can actually have a desktop rather than being booted straight into the command line. Okay, next it's going to ask if you'd like to install graphics drivers. So if you hit no here, the default drivers will be used. We're going to go ahead and install them. I've got AMD drivers, Intel drivers, and NVIDIA drivers. And I also have VirtualBox guest drivers here. So these are the guest utils, which will make it so you're going to have a graphical environment if you're installing Arch into VirtualBox, which we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Okay, and then it's going to ask you if you'd like to install a desktop or window manager. So I've got XFCE, Openbox, Awesome, i3, DWM. I'm going to go with XFCE. Okay, it's going to ask you if you'd like to install LightDM Display Manager. I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. It's going to go ahead and install LightDM for you and enable it. And 
And then once that's done, it's going to go ahead and install XFCE4. Okay, and then it's going to ask if you'd like to install some common software. So I've got a small list of software here that you can choose from. Uh, to select and unselect is just spacebar. So we got CMUS, which is a command line music player. We got Conky, HTOP, Lynx, Midori, Net Control, OpenSSH. I got Pulse Audio, ScreenFetch, and then ZSH. So we're just going to get it all. And it's just spacebar to select and unselect and enter when you're finished going to go ahead and grab all that software and install it for you, which can all be installed offline as well. Okay, install process complete, reboot now. We're going to go ahead and say no. If you hit yes here, it'll just reboot right away. System fully installed. Would you like to unmount? Yes. Okay, so nine minutes and four seconds and I would have been able to move through that a lot faster, but I'm actually going over what everything does here. But my my quickest install time so far using this installer was 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Okay, so this is an SSH session, so I'm just going to go ahead and exit that. And here's the system I've been controlling the whole time. We're just going to go ahead and reset that system. Okay, it boots back into the installer, but we're going to go to boot existing OS. So here we are, this is the fresh install of Grub, which was just installed with the script. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and boot this up. And here we are at our light DM login screen, so go ahead and enter my password here. And there you have it. XFCE fresh install installed 100% offline using my installer script. Let me come over here. Screen fetch fresh install with 396 packages. Pac-Man hasn't even been ran yet, so which is why it's giving us the errors up here. And as you can see, it added multi-lib and Arch Linux FR. Um, the automatic partition scheme goes ahead and sets up a 100 meg boot goes ahead and sets up your root partition and then however much you selected for your swap and that's it that's that's how you install Arch Linux from anywhere using my Arch Linux Anywhere ISO hope you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching and expect to see a release of this every two weeks with updated packages. Um, I plan on going ahead and pushing out a release every two weeks just to ensure that it at least has relatively updated packages rather than just being completely out of date. So yeah, I'm going to be keeping this maintained and updated and possibly adding more packages in the future depending on how much size it adds because right now the current size is 1.5 gigs which is not bad at all considering you can install a full working desktop with this so yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching